5 of the craziest cults of all time. Founded in 1968 by Christian minister David Berg, the Children of God were a religious group which blended free love attitudes with preparing for the second coming of Jesus. Berg was also referred to as Moses David and King David by his followers, and he proclaimed to be the last and most anointed prophet of the end times. In 1974, the cult had over 4,000 members in 70 countries. The group was most known for its law of love, which contained controversial attitudes towards sex and sexuality, including those that encouraged promiscuity, incest, and even the sexual abuse of children. Berg's own stepson was sexually abused by adult women as a toddler, and the psychological damage led him to murder his former nanny and commit suicide when he grew older. Members of the Children of God were encouraged to have sex with non-members to recruit them. This activity was known as flirty fishing and was eventually halted due to an increasing number of sexually transmitted diseases within the group. Members were encouraged to take part in loving Jesus by imagining themselves joined by Jesus while they masturbated or took part in sexual intercourse. To avoid male homosexuality, the one practice the group forbade, male members were told to imagine themselves as women during these activities. As time passed, the Children of God went through a few name changes. It is now known as the Family International. Although Berg passed away decades ago, the group, now run by Berg's widow Karen Zerby, is still extremely active and has its own website, social media pages, and an estimated 3,000 members around the world. Formed in 1984 by Joseph DiMambro and Luc Jure, this secret society saw itself to be based on the same foundations and ideals of the Knights Templar. Jure claimed to be both a reincarnation of one of the members of the original order and of Christ himself. The order was a doomsday cult that believed the end of the world was to arrive in the mid-1990s. It believed that upon their earthly deaths, members of the order were to be taken to a planet that orbited around the star Sirius. The cult had lodges in several countries where Freemason rituals took place and had a sizable following. However, the group lost many of their followers after one member exposed the leaders and explained how he was hired to fit electrical devices inside the inner sanctuaries that Jure used to project images, which tricked members into thinking he could conjure up spirits. Shortly after this reveal, DeMambro ordered the man's three-month-old baby to be killed due to his resemblance to the Antichrist. He was stabbed multiple times with a wooden stake. Both parents were also murdered. In 1994, in preparation for what DeMambro and Jure believed was to be the end of days, 53 members of the order were either killed or committed suicide, including both of the group's founders. In Switzerland, many of the victims were discovered dressed in ceremonial robes and had plastic bags over their heads. A large number died from a gunshot to the head or asphyxiation, and some had been drugged. Following these incidents, in 1995, 16 more members of the cult were also murdered or committed suicide and their bodies were found in a star formation in the Vercors Mountains of France. Finally, a year and a half later, five more members died in a house fire in Quebec. Heaven's Gate was a religious doomsday cult based in San Diego, founded by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles in the 1970s. The pair firmly believed they were the two witnesses described in the Book of Revelation, and had been given higher level minds than other people. Applewhite also believed that he was a descendant of Jesus Christ and believed in extraterrestrials and UFOs. It is also said that he had a history of checking himself into mental institutions. Nettles died in 1985 due to cancer, but Applewhite continued to recruit members and ran the organization himself. The Heaven's Gate lived communally in a large rented San Diego home which they called their monastery. They funded their lifestyle by doing web design and owned a company called Higher Source. The group's main belief was that the earth was about to be recycled or wiped clean and that the only way they could survive was to leave. In 1997, 39 members of the Heaven's Gate cult were found dead in their San Diego mansion after the group followed through with their mass suicide plan. Marshall Applewhite convinced 38 of his followers to take their own lives in the belief that they would board a spacecraft following the Hale-Bob comet. The group ingested an overdose of phenylbarbital mixed with applesauce and vodka. Many of the dead were discovered lying neatly in their own bunk beds, with a square piece of purple cloth covering their faces and torsos. Every member of the group wore matching black shirts and sweatpants, brand new black and white Nike shoes, and wore wristbands with the words, 
Heaven's Gate Away Team written on them. Shortly prior to the mass suicide, the Heaven's Gate created a video and recorded their final interviews. Bizarrely, they all appeared to be happy and excited with what they were about to do. And the ones we have worked so hard to represent are our older members, T and O, who are from the next level. Then you can be sure the next level is watching. Because by your belief, you allow them a chance to save the part of you that may become a child in our father's house too, at a later time, if that is where you want to be. You know, forcing me to do this is something that I know deep inside is right for me. And I feel like that's important. Uh, the next level gives everybody uh, their rights. They're very rights conscious. And they give them the freedom to do whatever they want. Tiendo at this time. Very happy to, to be here. Do you have any thoughts about this? Uh, what's next for us? Uh, the only thoughts that I have is the preparation that I've made to separate from the vehicle. Leave it all behind. There's nothing here. For me. We were kept blind and ignorant here, which is kind of the state that, with these vehicles, probably the best we can do. But it's that simple. I mean, it's, you know, it, we're all looking forward to it. If you could just see it that way and just see how simple this is to us, because we don't identify as these bodies. We know they're not us. I don't know if that helps you any, but if you could just get into our headspace a little bit and just see how happy we are and, uh, you know, how strong will we are about doing this and committed to this. I mean, I'm nothing without my older members, T and O, and I, I just can't wait to get up there with them. I don't have much else to say with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Westboro Baptist Church is an extremist hate group that consists of about 40 members who are mostly extended family of its former leader. The church was formed in 1955 as a branch of the East Side Baptist Church and was headed by Fred Phelps, who severed his relationship with the original church after his church was properly founded. Phelps was known for using fear and abuse to enforce his power, and his children and grandchildren were raised to believe the church's teachings. Westboro is best known for its anti-LGBT and homophobic beliefs that have compared members of the gay community to Nazis. The church's website is titled, God Hates Fags, and this phrase is thought to be its tagline. The church caught the attention of the public when it began its picketing ministry, which consisted of members of the church holding controversial protests while holding up signs such as, God hates Jews, and thank God for AIDS. These protests have been held for seemingly random reasons, from picketing celebrities' concerts, to attacking industries known for hiring LGBT staff, to even holding a protest at the funeral of an LGBT youth. The church has also picketed the funeral of a Marine who was killed in action while serving in Iraq, holding up a sign that read, Thank God for dead soldiers, and you're going to hell. The church believes that the widely negative response to its anti-Semitic and homophobic activities are proof of their righteousness. They claim to have held over 57,000 pickets to date. Due to their extremist activities, members of the church have been banned from Canada and the UK. Despite all the negative publicity and the death of former leader Fred Phelps, the church is still going strong today, where they still protest and make accusations, including one that US President Barack Obama is the Antichrist. They continue to carry out hateful activities against other religions, some branches of Christianity, Jews, soldiers, the media, and numerous countries through their website. The People's Temple of the Disciples of Christ was founded by Jim Jones in 1955. It was a new religious movement of Christianity, which also worked in elements of socialist politics and liberation theology. Jones also emphasized racial equality, which earned him a sizable African-American following. At its best, the People's Temple had a massive 20,000 members. The group thrived in San Francisco for years, with churches and buildings to its name before a media expose threatened to be released concerning the temple's inner workings. This included claims that the group used fear and self-imposed humiliation in its community and accusations of sexual abuse and kidnapping. In order to escape, Jones moved his congregation to a commune known as Jonestown in Guyana, which he had been building for a few years and which he referred to as paradise.
In 1978, a congressman investigating the abuse claims regarding the temple decided to take a plane to Jonestown along with former temple members, several journalists, and other crew. However, they were killed by temple security guards before they could leave. That same day, Jim Jones ordered the majority of his congregation to drink a grape-flavored drink laced with cyanide. Members of the group that refused to drink were injected with the poison or forced to drink at gunpoint or even shot. This resulted in the deaths of 918 people, including 276 children. Jim Jones didn't drink the poison himself, but instead died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Today, this event is best known as the Jonestown Massacre, 